What's up guys, coming at you from Shenzhen as usual. Didn't do a video yesterday, as I mentioned, I'm not doing daily vlogs anymore, but I had a couple of things to update you on today. And I wanted to give some advice to some people who may be going into a situation where they need to stay at home for a while. Um, and then also introduce a really uh, cool video that I've been waiting to upload for a while. Um, I'll get to that at the end. But first, uh, there was an opportunity because I had to go out to pick something up. There was an opportunity to take you on a drive so you can see what the streets are looking like in Shenzhen now. Uh, so let me flip the camera around first so you can see that. So things are getting a little bit uh, back to normal. Uh, traffic is still pretty light. Uh, but more and more people are getting back to work. We saw a lot of people walking around outside and yesterday was the first day that I took my kids out in the garden in like 50 days. Uh, it's just incredible how long they've been cooped up at home. Our um, 10 month old, well 11, 11 months now, he, um, <laughs> he used to always point at the elevator because he wanted to go outside to play. And after two months at home, which is like, when you think about that, that's like 20% of his life. 20% of his life, he's all of a sudden forgotten about going outside and playing in the garden. He stopped pointing at the elevator. We took the kids out yesterday. They got on their bikes. I took my youngest, uh, the, the, the 11-month-old, on his uh, little, I don't know what the English name is for it. The Chinese name is a new new And I put my electric skateboard beside it so I could uh, use it as um, kind of a propel, uh, propeller of types. So it was really fun. Uh, but now today he started pointing to the elevator again. He remembers that the elevator leads to a fun place downstairs where you can ride around and go outside. So <laughs> it really, um, you know, you can imagine it, it takes a toll on an adult, but for, for somebody that age, it's really interesting to see the dynamic of him even forgetting that an outside exists. Um, kind of sad when you think about it. But um, yeah, things are getting uh, back to normal here. And it's really, it's really quite safe uh, in Shenzhen. They've really controlled the numbers well. But something happened, which was exactly the thing I was complaining about in a few videos uh, ago, where we're, you know, we've gone through a lot of sacrifices. A lot of people are participating here to control in Shenzhen, but people are flying in from different places in the world and not being quarantined. And yesterday, or two days ago, there was a guy from the UK who flew in, uh, just had to sign a form, have to have, have his temperature checked. Then the second day, um, the second day uh, he came down with a fever, he got tested, he has coronavirus. Now everybody he was on the boat with, because he flew into Hong Kong and took the boat across to Shenzhen, everybody who was on the boat with him has been located and rounded up, the taxi driver, I think there's a few more people they're looking for. So they're on top of it, hopefully it's going to be contained and we're not going to have, you know, uh, everything start all over again um, in Shenzhen. But that was one of the things I was um, concerned about coming true. But on to one of my main points, the main talking point of this video, which is what to do when uh, this issue hits your country, or if you're in a situation where you're going to be stuck at home like we were for so long. And there are some things that are not transferable um, that are, you know, you know, so for example here, there was never really, uh, surprisingly, there was never really a panic here for uh, goods or groceries you know the grocery shelves were all well stocked the delivery services for groceries were still all working um, nobody really panicked despite this being one of the most serious places for coronavirus and despite probably some of the videos you usually see where people try to pick these selective videos out of China trying to paint China as an uncivilized place we haven't seen the scenes like we've seen overseas in terms of toilet paper not being in stock or uh, the shelves being bare um, Everything, everything's been pretty good here in that regard. So I can't really say don't go out and panic because if everybody else is panicking around you, I think it's probably a good idea to make sure you have some canned food and all this kind of stuff just in case. Um, you know, I think the, 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 your, your own supermarkets will probably be restocked pretty um, quickly as well. But, you know, it may uh, take a few days or whatever. So that, that's not something I can really give advice on. But one thing I do want to say is what I think people should be doing is that they should be looking to China for inspiration in terms of what to do in this situation. And some people can't get past the fact that they just want to point fingers at China and say, well, China is where this virus came from. We can thank them for it to begin with. Fine. If you want to do that, great. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But what you can't deny is that the measures that were put in place, the things that the government did to try to control this are just unprecedented. And it's on a scale that's just unbelievable. And uh, again, of course, you can't do all of the same things. You can't build a hospital in 10 days like they did just in case it gets out of control. Um, 
you you can't mandate uh, that you know well they didn't necessarily mandate it but you're downloading this app so that the government can can track you and and inform you right away if you were around somebody who had uh, coronavirus all these things you can't really do in the West but take take a look at some of the things you can do perhaps on a um, you know similar things on a, a lesser scale um, the most important thing to probably think about is what happens when somebody is not cooperating. So if you remember from the video we did a few days ago, the video conference with four YouTubers, Lee said that they had to pass an emergency law in the UK because somebody who was infected or at risk refused to cooperate and was just walking around in public. And um, they had to pass an emergency law to forcefully take him in. And don't wait until you get to that point. Think about that now. If somebody who has coronavirus is refusing to participate or to isolate themselves, are you still going to say, well, no, we're in a free society. He can do whatever he wants. Or are you going to start suddenly saying, mm, okay, hold on a second. He's really irresponsible. And, and you have to think about the community. You don't live in a, uh, a society where you can only just think about yourselves. You have to think about the people around you. And if they're not going to be doing the responsible thing, then we need to uh, have provisions for this. Um, these are things to be thinking about beforehand. Don't think about it when it happens. So for all of you people who are leading a discussion, influencing the public discussion, or if you uh, are in a position where you can influence somebody in power, start thinking about these things and don't be shy to look at China and get over your um, kind of um, disappointment in China and the fact, from the fact that it came from here to begin with to say, okay, well, what can we learn from the data that they have available? Because there's a ton of data available right now. And there's a ton of things that they did. What are some of the things we can do? What are the, some of the things um, uh, we can potentially co copy, but maybe not at the same intensity or whatever it may be? Um, but then my second thing I want to recommend, which is perhaps even more important, is think about your mental health. If all of a sudden schools are canceled and you're going to have to be stuck at home for one or two months like we were, I think thinking about the necessity, the, the, the necessary items is something everybody does. But maybe what you're not thinking of is mental health items because it really gets to you. I had a friend from, uh, you know, an American friend living in Guangzhou. He reached out to me today and said, man, this, you know, I'm getting cabin fever. Um, think about what you need to keep yourself sane during that period of time. If you have kids, maybe pick up some board games. You know, if you enjoy a little bit of whiskey at night, make sure you have some whiskey at home, of course, and, you know, enjoy responsibly. Um, whatever it is that makes you happy, uh, be careful not to use up all of your time just spending it on technology. If you have a pre-existing technology addiction, um, it has a very high uh, uh, possibility of getting worse <laughs> while you're cooped up at home. If you don't have an existing technology addiction, there's a potential of picking up one when you're stuck at home twiddling your thumbs for so long. So make sure you've got things that just keep you happy, keep you busy, um, you know, uh, self-improvement stuff, you know, maybe some kinds of books that you want to be looking at. Um, I don't know, but just think about mental health in general um, or fun things you can do with the kids uh, if you do have kids. So I think other than those kinds of two pieces, two main pieces of advice, uh, don't be don't be shy to look at China for some inspiration on what you guys need to do uh, to control this or to keep it in check and think about your mental health when you're faced with the possibility of being stuck at home for a long period of time. Um, I don't think I have anything else I can think of right now on the fly. If I do think of something else, I'll, uh, I'll put it in a future video. And again, they're not going to be daily anymore, but I will probably be uploading another video tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. It's an interview which I had with a friend in Chongqing uh, back in December. Uh, well, I had two interviews. One was with Ben Brown, and that one's already been uploaded. You may have already seen that one. But this is with another American who's doing his PhD in Chongqing uh, named Cordell. And I, every time I meet him, I just have the longest, most interesting conversations. I had lunch with him before the interview. So to be honest with you, I'm, I can't remember what I discussed with him off camera and on camera. If I remember correctly, we discussed... Um, school systems, like what, it, what, what his experience was like um, in America versus Europe versus uh, China in terms of studying. I think we spoke about technology, uh, the future of commerce, um, might have spoken a little bit about economics, politics, uh, race, um, censorship, some of the others. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I can't remember exactly all the things we spoke about but I'm finally ready to upload the video. What I was waiting on was I was waiting for a translation. I, um, I wanted to put uh, Chinese and English subtitles and that took quite a long time. 
and I had uh, the help of uh, one of my um, one of the people who work with me very very talented shout out to you Simone if you're listening <laughs> she's amazing she's actually worked for me a number of times and when I had a chance to bring her back uh, of course I jumped on it and I was so happy that she accepted and uh, she's had a bit of extra time considering we don't have too much to do in terms of our main uh, tasks with our uh, brew pub and with the franchising and with all this kind of stuff so we've been working on some of these videos together uh, so anyways uh, it, it's done. Uh, that video's done, and I'm going to upload it for all of you guys to see. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, and uh, pretty excited to get your feedback. Um, so yeah, let me wrap it up there, guys, before I go on too long. Uh, I, uh, I, I have, even though I'm not doing daily vlogs anymore, I do have a mental note of all the things I said I will speak about in future videos. I haven't forgotten it. I know some of you reminded me in, um, in the last video. I haven't forgotten about it. Um, so I'm wrapping up there. Stay safe, take all the precautions you should be taking during this time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.